Okay, we're gonna look at a nice geometry problem. So say we've got a unit square, and by that I mean a square with side length one, and then sharing the base of this square is an equilateral triangle. So here are the other two sides of this equilateral triangle. They also have length one. And then up here, up here in the right-hand corner, we have a circle which is inscribed. And we wanna find the radius of the circle. That's our goal here. We're going to be using some trigonometric identities here, and in fact, we're going to need the double angle formula for tangent. And there are a couple of nice geometric proofs for this, but I want to show you guys a nice one that uses complex numbers before we jump into the solution of this. So let's get to it. So let's say we have a complex number z in its rectangular form. So that's going to be x plus iy. Well, then we can think about it as living in the complex plane along the real axis, a distance of x from the origin, and along the imaginary axis, a distance of y along the origin. And then we can put it in the complex plane right here. And so that ray going from the origin to the complex number is pretty important. Notice we could maybe look at this angle and that angle plays an important role with this complex number, it's called the argument. Another number that plays an important role with this complex number is this distance from the origin, which is called r sometimes, or the modulus. Now by trigonometry and like elementary geometry, it's not too hard to see that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared and that the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. And that's because the tangent of theta will be opposite over adjacent, but that's y over x. Sometimes this angle theta is called the argument and we would write something like this, arg z is equal to theta. Okay, so next, we want to use these objects together with Euler's formula to form something called the exponential or polar version of the complex number. And we can do that by writing z as r times e to the i theta. Next up, I'll find the square of this complex number two different ways, using the polar formula and the rectangular formula. So let's see, using the polar formula, it's pretty easy. I just get r squared e to the i 2 theta, but then using the rectangular formula, I can multiply this out, and what we'll get is x squared minus y squared plus 2xy times i. But now we're going to extract the tangent of the argument of both sides of this equation. So I'll write it like this. We'll take the tangent of the argument, and here also the tangent of the argument. So over there on the right hand side, it's pretty easy to see that the argument is two theta. So this is just tangent of two theta. And then over here on the left hand side, well notice we can see that this tangent of theta is y over x, but that's just imaginary part divided by real part. But now x and y are being played by these different roles. So the imaginary part is 2xy and the real part is x squared minus y squared. So here, this gives us 2xy over x squared minus y squared. So notice that gives us this nice equation that tangent of two theta equals this 2xy over x squared minus y squared. So we're actually pretty close to the end of this derivation. What we'll do here is multiply the numerator and the denominator by one over x squared. And let's see what that gives us. So that's gonna give us twice y over x in the numerator. Then in the denominator, we'll have one minus y over x quantity squared. Next up, we can finish this off by substituting tangent of theta for y equals x into this object over here, and that will finish off this double angle formula for tangent. Now that we've derived this double angle formula for tangent, we're ready to find the radius of our yellow circle here. So what we'll do is start off by putting a center point to this circle. So I'll put it in this green color and then making a line segment from this lower right hand corner of the square up to this center of the circle. So let's see, that'll go something like this. Okay, nice. Now next, I wanna add to this two more line segments. 
So I'll add a line segment here from the center to this edge of the square, which is where the square is intersecting with the circle. So that's gonna give me something right here. And notice that since the square is tangent to the circle, we know that this is a right angle. So that's important to notice. Okay, then we'll do the same thing over here. We'll take an edge from the center of the circle to where the circle intersects the triangle. And again, for the same reason, because of the tangency, we know that this is a right angle. But if those two are right angles, then that means the, tri the angles inside the triangles are also right angles. Okay, next up, we see that this side length here is R. This side length here is also R. And then this side length here is unknown, but it's shared by both of the triangles. So let's see what we've got. We've got a right triangle. So the right angle is right here. That has two of the same sides equal. But then by the Pythagorean theorem, that means that their third side is also equal. So by the SSS theorem, we see that this triangle over here on the right-hand side is similar to this triangle over here on the left-hand side. But that's really nice because that means this angle here, if we call it theta, then that means this angle here is also theta. In other words, this entire angle is equal to two theta. But we know the measure of that entire angle, given that this is a 90 degree angle and this is a 60 degree angle, we have that two theta is equal to 30 degrees. Next up, we see that this line segment along the square has length little r, the radius of the circle, just by how this circle is positioned. That makes this leftover portion of the line segment equal to one minus r. But now we can calculate the tangent of this angle theta in terms of r. Notice the tangent of theta will be opposite divided by adjacent. So we can write that down. We've got tangent of theta equal to r over one minus r. So let's write that down. So now we just have to calculate the tangent of theta in a different way. And that's where this double angle formula comes in. It's not so hard to calculate the tangent of 30 degrees. And in fact, we can do that pretty easily over here on this side of the picture inside of this equilateral triangle. We'll drop an altitude from the vertex here to this point along the base. We know that this distance here is one half. We know this distance here is one but that makes this length here by the Pythagorean theorem the square root of 3 over 2. And then this line segment bisects this 60 degree angle, making this angle measure right here 2 theta, or 30 degrees like we have over there. Okay, but now we can easily calculate the tangent of 2 theta, and that's going to give us, well, in this case, it's 1 half, divided by square root of three over two, so this is gonna be one over the square root of three. But now we're pretty much all set. So we can take these two expressions, the expression that we know for the tangent of two theta, and then the expression for tangent of theta in terms of r, and put it into our double angle formula for tangent, and that gives us some sort of equation that we can use to solve for r. So let's write that equation down. We have one over the square root of three equals, so two tangent theta, that's gonna be two r over one minus r, over one minus tangent squared theta, so that's gonna be one minus r squared over one minus r quantity squared like that. Okay, so now let's work to simplify this a little bit. We've got like some sort of complex fraction, so maybe we would like to kill the denominators that are both in the numerator and the denominator. We can do that by multiplying by one minus r. So let's see what that leaves us with. In the numerator, we will have two times r times one minus r. Notice one of the copies of one minus r gets canceled. And then in the denominator, we'll have one minus r squared minus r squared. Okay, so let's see if we can simplify that a little bit. I'm gonna bring this one over the square root of three down. 
And then we will have 2r minus 2r squared in the numerator. Then thinking about how this multiplies out, it multiplies out to r squared minus 2r plus 1. So after simplifying there, we see that that becomes uh, 1 minus 2r. So let's maybe go ahead and take that equation to the top and we'll finish it off. So in the last board we ended with the following equation for r. We've got 1 over root 3 is 2r minus 2r squared over 1 minus 2r. So now we'll cross multiply. That'll give us a quadratic equation to solve. So let's see, multiplying this up here gives us 1 minus 2r. And now we have 2 times the square root of 3r minus 2 times the square root of 3r squared, like that. Okay, well, let's move everything to one side of the equation. Maybe I'll take these guys and move them over to the left-hand side of the equation so that my leading coefficient is positive. That'll leave me with 2 times the square root of 3 times r squared. And then putting the r terms together, we'll have minus 2 times 1 plus the square root of 3r. And then finally, we'll have plus 1 equals 0. But now we can apply the quadratic formula to this pretty easily. That'll give us r equals 2 times 1 plus root 3 plus minus the square root of, well, it's gonna be the coefficient of r squared. So that's gonna be four times one plus the square root of three squared, minus four times a times c, so that's gonna be minus eight times the square root of three, like that, okay? This is gonna be all over two times this, so that's gonna be all over four root three. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of simplification here. So I wanted to notice that this guy will multiply out to 1 plus 3 plus 2 root 3 just by foiling that. Then this 2 root 3 will multiply with the 4 and cancel this 8 root 3. Then we'll have 4 times 4. Then we take the square root, but the square root of 4 times 4 is just 4, leaving us with 2 times 1 plus root 3 plus minus four all over four times the square root of three. Now we need to decide if we keep the plus four or the minus four. And in fact, we wanna keep the minus four in this case because if we include a positive four in the numerator, then the radius of our circle will be larger than the size of the square, but that's clearly impossible. So like I said, we're gonna keep minus four here. So let's see what that looks like. We'll have two minus four, so that's negative two, and then plus two root three, all over four root three. Now we can make some simplifications, maybe factor a two out of the numerator. That leaves us with negative one plus the square root of three, all over two times the square root of three. And so that's our goal radius. In other words, that's the radius of this circle up here inscribed between the triangle and the other sides of the square. And that's a good place to stop.